Can a physician be forced to perform a transgender medical procedure, like a sex change, or if he or she has a religious conviction not to do so? Nope. President Joe Biden has wanted to mandate doctors to perform sex change surgeries against their will, but a federal court has ruled against the president twice. The latest one was late last week on Friday, Kevin, when a federal appeals court said President Biden cannot force a religious hospital to perform a medical service that violates their conscience. Yeah, Tom, I can't even imagine electing to have a major surgery and then choosing a doctor who doesn't want to perform the surgery. If you're going under the knife, you want someone who's all in on the outcome of that surgery. Why you would want a doctor who has a religious or any other objection to the surgery is beyond me. But in this case, Catholic employers sued, arguing that the government's mandate forces doctors to perform controversial and in sometimes harmful medical procedures that violates their religious conscience. Join us now is Rashini Rashkumar, attorney and host of the podcast, The Crisis Files. Good morning, Rashini. How are you? Good morning, Kevin. You know, this situation really presents so many layers that the framers of the Constitution could never have imagined when they were separating church and state. Yeah. So walk us through the legal arguments on both sides of this case, if you will. Well, I mean, the thing is, you've got you've got so much anti-discrimination law that's out there, both case law and statutes that people should not be discriminated against because of their sexual orientation or their their gender status. So it's hard because that kind of contradicts the whole separation of church and state and freedom of religion. So both sides, you know, are going to land on whichever one of those they feel the Constitution more wholly protects. The fact is, the way we've set up our laws and the way the Constitution was originally written, it really does protect both things. So when it comes down to that human judgment, which I sometimes call that gray area, this is in the gray, then you aren't going to force a doctor to perform something based on that separation of church and state and their own religious beliefs. So that's why I believe it came down this way, but the most recent circuit court, I believe that was the Eighth Circuit, you know, they were a unanimous decision. Now that says a lot. They weren't split. So one thing to watch moving forward is will this show up In any of the other circuits, will there be a split decision, meaning a split among the different or between the different circuits? That's what would then push it up more likely to the U.S. Supreme Court. But this is such a hot topic, Tom and Kevin, that I could see that journey um, underway already. So it it is a hot topic, but is it uh, is it a huge issue? Are there that many people who are looking for surgery that are not able to find a a doctor or a surgeon to do it? It really doesn't seem like a huge issue. Like it's almost like this issue that went looking for a problem or a crisis, as I like to say that we I don't know that we needed this adjudicated, but I think there is such a strong pull in the narrative right now for LGBTQ rights, for transgender rights, and most of us don't have issues with that. But I think that depending on who's in the White House, there's that, you know, that person's own narrative. They want to write their own situation that maybe they're pushed in some cases politically to do some moves that might not necessarily be needed. Because like you said, Kevin, off the top, If you're going to go under the knife, you're going to go to a doctor that you trust. And if you know that a particular doctor is against you for some reason or another, you're not going to get services from that person. Yeah, I don't think most people would. You know, President Biden's, his administration, I mean, their basic argument is that the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, it prohibits a doctor from discrimination, from discriminating when determining whether or not to perform a medical procedure. So basically what they're saying, uh, correct me here if I'm right or wrong, is if you want this money, speaking to the doctor or to the hospital, if you want this money from the federal government, you're going to perform the surgery whether you want to or not, whether or not you think it's medically necessary or you'll face financial harm? Well, basically, and that's why these suits even came about, because these various entities, um, some of them run by the Catholic Church or nuns, they were saying, hey, we need this protection because we don't want these would-be patients to turn around and sue us in a civil court situation, right, where we don't have the money to pay out some kind of judgment against us. So that's really why it looks like, that's how I understand it, why these lawsuits even started. But when it really comes down to it, as you describe it, I just don't see uh, an, an enforcement authority 
making, enforcing, um, basically almost threatening a doctor to perform a surgery he or she doesn't want to perform. So this is a very sticky area. The basic tenet of not discriminating against someone, no matter who it is, uh, really does you know go with the Hippocratic oath that doctors yeah. take. They're supposed to uh, absolutely uh, help and and heal everyone. But I think because this is more of a, an intentional changing or intentional surgery, there's probably some gray area there where the attorneys for the ch the Catholic charities and the nuns and, and the places that are running these services that are saying, this isn't just, okay, a doctor finds you, you're bleeding out, he's got to treat you, right? right. It's very different from something like that. So it would be really, it would have been interesting to be there for the oral arguments on, on this stuff. Yeah, and you mentioned that Hippocratic Oath. I mean, how much discretion legally does a physician have? I mean, if, if a doctor believes a sex change surgery or a hysterectomy on a child, or a removal of sex organs will be harmful in some way to the patient. Aren't they legally duty bound to follow that oath to do no harm? Right, to do no harm, and that, and so that there is another part of the gray area, Tom. Right, just like when you know a more traditional situation, uh, childbirth, whether it's a C-section or natural birth, there are times when doctors have to make the call. They try to pull in uh, the family to help, uh, but if if the mother's life is in danger by delivering a child, they may not deliver the child. So there are so many situations that have nothing to do with transgender rights where doctors find themselves in these very precarious situations and they're always going for life. They're going for healing and for life. And that is what the oath really does stand for. Uh, and so these situations get a little into the coercion area. That's my theory. I didn't, I didn't, you know, read that in a, uh, an opinion somewhere, <laughs> but that's, that's where I think these courts are siding with, uh, the institutions that would have to perform the services. Well, doctors could certainly argue that this is a elective surgery that could bring harm to the patient and therefore they'd be violating their oath by doing the surgery. I'm wondering, is there a political gain for either party to have this particular issue on the front burner? Yeah, I mean, it seems, well, you know, Biden is the one in office. It's, it's his White House that's pushing this. There is pol political gain in the bigger picture. I don't know if this is really some hot bet issue like abortion was in the 2022 midterm elections. So I just don't know that it's going to carry the same sort of uh, emotion because in the abortion situation, and I've talked with you both about this on your show, most of the country, regardless of your party, believes in free choice. But in this situation, if it were to have to go to some kind of ballot, you've got a lot of people that would not uh, be in favor of forcing nuns and doctors and places that are run by uh, religious uh, institutions to have to perform things. Yeah, and there's this rule that was put into place by the Health and Human Services Agency in 2016. It says that the medical facilities that we're talking about who receive federal funding cannot discriminate on the basis of sex. So if there's a doctor or there's a medical facility that doesn't perform gender transition services for anyone, in other words, it doesn't discriminate, nobody can have this, how then would that be discriminatory since they're treating all of their yeah. patients equally? Yeah, then it, it isn't. I mean, that, and that's, again, we get into the gray. That's a great <laughs> legal argument right there, Tom, that you made. Um, that is what they probably hang a lot of this on. If they're not doing it because of their beliefs, then no one's really getting discriminated against and you're not forcing them than to perform a surgery they don't even perform in the first place. Yeah, well, it's, it's going to be interesting, as you said. It would have been interesting to hear the arguments in that room uh, last week. Uh, they'll continue, I'm sure. Rashini Raj Kumar, host of the Crisis Files podcast and, of course, an attorney and a political analyst. Thanks so much, Rashini. Great to talk with you. Thanks, guys.